In this video, we are going to be installing four inch LED slimline lights. I got a whole string of them, about 30 of them to do in this room. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover all the installation techniques, all the different product options that are out there, where you can buy them and where you can get your best value. So all of that's coming soon. But before we talk about where you should shop for them, I'm gonna show the demonstration for the installation. Now this is crucial. The largest mistake people make when they're installing their pot lights is the way that they cut the hole in their ceiling. Remember, you don't wanna be drilling a hole until all of your finished paint is completely done, all right? This is the last step before you put your flooring in. What you wanna do is get a drill, one of these little drill bits here, okay? You wanna to go to the store. Now I love the Milwaukee hole saw bits. What we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the diameter on the back of this light. From this edge to this edge, not the whole finish trim just the part that goes inside the drywall. And then in this case, it's exactly four and a quarter inches. So I went and I bought a four and a quarter drill bit. Now they come in one eighth inch increments. So it doesn't matter what manufacturer you buy, you can get a hole saw that fits perfectly. If you use a hole saw that's not the right size, you're gonna be fussing around with a knife to try to make the hole bigger, or your hole will be too big. And you can see that there's not a whole lot of mercy here. That's not a lot of overlap room, right? So if your hole is just a little bit too big, you run the risk of always having gaps showing and then you're patching holes, making a mess of your ceiling. Do yourself a favor, get one of these bits, throw it in your drill, put your drill on low speed, okay? This is not a race. Generally speaking, uh, there's three mistakes people make. They try to drill too fast because they're in a hurry. They drill in the wrong direction, right? And then they're pushing too hard. This situation, you wanna let the drill bit do all the work I know this is gonna be interesting, but there are actually holes here that you can look up through and you can find the mark on the ceiling that you made and you can just start your drilling process. But here's the trick, put it on reverse. The teeth are all sharp and pointing this way. And if you start drilling like that and you aren't perfectly parallel to the ceiling, like you have a bit of an angle, the first tooth will grab and then your saw blade's gonna run all over the place. You're gonna destroy your ceiling. So you put it on reverse, Set your blade, your pilot bit, which is longer than the teeth. Put that in the drywall, go real slow. Now, most of these drills come with a trigger finger kind of reaction. The harder you squeeze, the faster it goes, but you can go nice and gentle. A Little bit of a squeeze, okay? Here we go. And we're creating a hole for the pilot bit first. Now we've got contact. We're still in reverse. So what we wanna do now is we wanna scratch up the drywall going backwards because it's just paper, right? Just backwards and you'll make a perfect, perfect scratch. Now here we go, I'm gonna show you. Now I'm a little bit off center here. I actually am going deeper on one side than the other, but because I'm going backwards, my, my drill isn't running all over the room. Now there's two things you can do. Now you can go into forward and you can drill through. It's nice and quick. But what I suggest, especially if you're a homeowner and you're new at this, you're gonna have wiring because we, we, we run the wire in advance. You may or may not have everything where you want it. Your wires might be sitting right above the hole and you're worried about damage. If you drill in reverse, okay? Like when you run your finger across the teeth backwards, it doesn't cut you. So if you drill in reverse and you make contact with the wire passively, it's not gonna wreck your wire, all right? And this is the system for going through. And as soon as you feel it release, just let go. There we go, that's a perfect hole. You don't have broken edges, right? So that when you install the light later, it's gonna have positive contact with those spring-loaded feet. And we just go like this, and upside down. And that's how you clean out your drill. <laughs> it's a dirty, messy job. Um, you might want to wear some glasses if you're concerned about it, but that's the basic idea for how to drill a hole. Now, we're going to get into a lot more information about pot lights right now, but where you can buy them, what kind to get, all the different color variations in the light and how you want to match that up with the rest of your room, and also how to map it and plan it. So let's get into the business of how to set up and have a perfect light installation. So if you're new to this kind of installation, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice here, and that is take a scrap piece of drywall. Take the new bit, drill your hole, okay? There we are. 
Now, I want you to open your package because you obviously have your light at this point because you've measured it out. And I want you to practice installing this and make sure that the hole is working for you. Get these spring-loaded clips in the hole, okay? And now push it around all four different sides and you should not see the hole exposed, okay? That is key. There we go. So we know that that's going to be a good installation. Now let's talk about the quality of these lights, where you can buy them, the different products that are on the market, and then we're going to do the actual installation where we're going to wire up and power up and snap the box into place. So before we go into the installation, I want to talk about where do you find these things because there are a lot of different products on the market. Now, I'm installing this product this time around. If, you've, if you're used to our channel, you've seen me use different ones before. And I used a product before that um, the cable that came from this box went directly into this, right? And they were fixed. And that installation process, you had to do all your wiring after you drilled your holes, after your installation was done. And that's an option. It doesn't really make too much of a difference. But this product here, it has a, a, a low voltage harness on it, okay? And this harness, it lines up, there's a little hole, and then you can screw them together, right? And it works lovely. And now it operates just like the other ones did, okay? The difference is, this one, if you want to, if you're in an environment where that's beneficial, okay, you can do all the wiring and have this left in the ceiling. That's an option. Uh, sometimes that's a really good option, and sometimes it's not. I prefer to wire after, simply because a lot of things can happen in, during a renovation. Uh, plans can change, ideas can change, locations can change. And if someone changes the light location, even just a couple of inches, it can be, you know, a, a, a make it or break it moment there, because if this is all wired in advance, perhaps I can't get this short feed over to where I want the new light to be. But I always wire with plenty of extra wire in the ceiling. So if there is a change, I can move it almost one or two feet any direction I want. So I like to do it afterwards. Now, the lights themselves, all right, we did a video uh, on a live stream not too long ago. We talked about where you can shop and get a great deal. So these lights, uh, just out of curiosity, I went down to Home Depot <laughs> to take a look at what they had. So the Home Depot, uh, they have this little package of lights here. It's a 12-pack of lights. Great idea, all right? It's like a project pack for homeowners. If you're doing a basement renovation or something like that, it's nice to buy in bulk. And so what Home Depot does is they show you, so each light at Home Depot, if you bought one of them, is $25. Now, if you buy their pack of 12, they're going to give you a huge discount. They're going to give you $100 off. Amazing, isn't it? $200 for 12. First glance, that looks like the deal of a lifetime, doesn't it? But here's the thing. There's a company in China that manufactures these lights. And they make 8 billion of these every 5 minutes. Let's just be honest. They're making these lights for probably 40, 50, maybe 100 or 200 different companies. And the only thing that they do different is they put the packaging for each person who's purchasing lights from them at a certain volume. They make unique packaging for them because the product itself has already been tested. It's already approved. It's approved for wet areas even. But what they do is they, they change the name on that part of the sticker and they put it in a different box. There are hundreds of people selling these lights all over the world and they're all coming from one plant. What you need to know is they're not worth $25 a piece. They're not worth 12 lights for 200. I bought them at Dragona, one of my favorite suppliers, and they sell mostly flooring. But because they're a wholesaler, they thought that would be a kind of a nice idea if they got into the lighting business. And so I actually bought these. Now these are superior quality. These are better than a lot of the products that are on the market because a lot of the products on the market come with really cheaply made springs, same factory. They come with no rubber gasket for wet areas, same factory. But these ones here, I picked up for $11.5 a light, not 25. 11 and a half times 12, well, it's 145 bucks. My lights were still $50 cheaper for a 12 pack than they were at Home Depot after that amazing deal. And I'm not even ordering them by bulk from China Direct. So what I'm trying to tell you is, just because you're in a store and you think you're getting a great deal, think twice. Because this kind of light, oh, and just for the record, 
This one here is a much higher quality than the one from Home Depot. They're using the really weak springs and the lights seem to sag off the drywall a lot. I'm not a big fan. But the point is this. There's one factory making lights. They make two or three different variations of quality. And if you want the high quality light, you need to go to the right location. Find one with that heavy duty spring, okay, that'll hold well. Find one that has this gasket on it. If there's no gasket and you put it in your bathroom, all that warm, moist air is racing up into your attic. Trust me. And then if you like it, you can get one with these connectors. It's a good little gig, right? This is kind of easy to work with because then when you're wiring your light, you don't have to wire with the whole assembly dangling. It's just the one little box and then you connect them afterwards. So with all that being said, that's the backstory on the industry and where these lights come from. It's not a real big secret. Most things that are manufactured in bulk are manufactured in China out of one plant, sold to a myriad of people who are all marketing them differently for different prices. But in a lot of cases, it's just the same product. So you'll see this with lights, you'll see this with bathroom fixtures and plumbing fixtures. You can buy something for $50 or $150 made from the same plant with a different sticker. You've really got to be keen to know where you're getting good value. All right, now let's get into the installation. So you know, wiring pot lights is relatively simple, right? The wire is going to go in the box and there's half of this box is where the connections are made. So you don't have to strip too much wire, right? But you do want to have enough of the sheathing that goes into the connector that goes into the box. So if you're going to strip a couple of inches off of each of these things, then you're going to be in good shape. If you strip too much, then you're going to be cutting everything back and then that's just going to be a problem. And we got that. We're going to pull out our handy dandy wire cutters here. And we're going to take off one inch. And it is supposed to be. And there we go. Now these snips, of course, have got the gauge on there. That's the same as the wire. This is a 14-2, which is a 14 gauge. So you put it in the 14 slot, it'll cut the sheathing without cutting through the wire. Give it a corner twist and pop that off. Now we're in business. You know you got a good pot light when you can snap the door open, you don't have a set screw. You snap it shut. I love this. This is so much easier than having to be up here with a drill. You still have this little punch out hole, okay? This one's easy. It only has connection on one side instead of two. So you don't have to hammer through and brick the box and rip it apart. Gotta love that. Of course, you're gonna need a cable connector because they sell these in little packages of five, or you can buy a tub of like a hundred. They're not expensive, so just get what you need. And you just pop this in. Try to be sure. I'm gonna show this on purpose. The cable connector comes with a like a, a missing spot here, so you can pinch it together and put it in the hole, and then it expands in the hole, sits in this groove so it stays fixed. There's a piece of sharp metal right here. Okay, that's where the, the breakout was for that connector. Resist the, don't let your, your, your cable connector go in and leave that metal exposed because that's where your wire is going to be going. So anything that's got wire running through it vibrates. So put it in, uh, uh, um, install it on the opposite side on purpose. Okay, so there's the wear. Let's make sure we put the solid part of the cable connector there. That's just good practice. That'll help reduce your risk of having any kind of an issue over time. Now, we take both of our wires. I like to line them up and push them together at the same time. All right, here we go. Uh -huh. Now, you can push through, and there's a little, little wedge in there that it gets caught if you try to pull it out, all right? So this is actually fixed in place. Let's just go pull all the blacks together. We'll pull the grounds together and the whites together. We'll separate all this for the camera. And the green wire gets connected to those. Now you notice this is a quick connect system. It's amazing. All you do is push the wire into the hole. <laughs> all right, here we are. Let's make sure it fit. There we go. There we go. Now that's in. There we go. That one's done. Do, 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 do. Now we're going to do the bite. Uh -huh. Now there are, wow, it's really tough to do this on camera. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pliers. Okay, I'm going to hold the wire still. 
right? That way I can push this on and get good connect contact. Now watch, that's set in place and you gotta, <clears throat> you can push it right in. That's why the depth that you strip these wires at is so important because you're actually gonna put it in. You can see that on camera, okay? The copper goes all the way to the end, okay? That one's done, that one's done. Just the black one. There's not a lot of room in these boxes, so if it's at all possible to set up your wiring configuration where you're only dealing with two wires, that's great. Always, what I do when I'm wiring my ceiling is I use one roll of wire and I'll loop it around and I keep all of these connections the same wire, it's just looped. And then when I'm ready to install my wire, I'll cut the loop in half. That gives me a lot of flexibility, so if, like again I said, if there's a position change or something, you can steal some of the length from one of the holes and pull it through to the next hole and allows you to move a location. It also gives you the flexibility if you make a mistake when you're cutting or trimming, you can trim it back and you always have lots of wire to play with. Now, now that we got all these connections made, we're just gonna tuck all this in the box in such a way that the lid will close. All right, snap. That's good. Piece of cake, right? Now, the only thing left here is this is the tricky little part. I've got two holes. That's the contact. Those are the wires. This other little divot here, you actually see that there's a, a detail that lines up. And it's a guide to make sure that the right pin in that hole goes in the right hole here, okay? And so you line that guide up, gentle here, you press it together, right? When you've got positive contact, and you bring this down, go backwards until you feel it click, because it's plastic threading, and you don't want to cross thread this stuff. There we go. Now, whew, let's take a second. What I'm gonna suggest is you do this to all of the lights in the room. And then, there's a secret ingredient you're gonna need. Surgical gloves. Now, I'm gonna tell you about this, because this is really important. Anybody who's been at this business for a while knows that when you paint a ceiling, and you use a beautiful brand new flat paint. If you touch that ceiling with your hair or your hands, oils that naturally exist in your hair and hands is gonna get on that ceiling. And then in a couple of weeks, maybe three or four weeks, you know, you're finished, your project's all done, everything is lovely. A little bit of dirt that's going in the air is gonna cling on to that. You're gonna see your fingerprints and little head marks. Do not touch your flat ceiling with anything, all right? Wear your nitrile gloves. Now, that box just installs there. Put it in a nice little comfy spot. Fish your wire up. Now here's the secret. Rest your first pin. Slide it up. Put the second pin up, okay? And then you can guide it into place, all right? Now, this is actually sitting a little bit off the drywall. And the reason for that, if you're taking it out, be careful. You don't wanna just let it come snap down and rip the drywall. This gasket is a lovely thing to have in bathrooms, but everywhere else, get rid of it, and that'll make sure your light fits nice and snug. Now look at a good solid spring, snaps it right into place, okay? The cheap lights, you put in there and they just kinda sit a little, you're tapping them and trying to spin them and find that happy spot, it drives you nuts. Get a good one, and then doesn't matter where I put this light, there's no hole showing. All things done. If you buy the right product for the right price. Now don't forget, that's the cheapest light I can find in town. It's the highest quality. It has options for wiring before and after. Huh? Piece of cake, snap together connectors, no morettes needed. You don't have to buy these. These are totally useless. Buy these. If you're gonna go blue with electrical, go with the gloves, not the morettes, right? Now, this is amazing. I can put in my area on my electrical code, 100 of these lights on a single light switch. Brilliant. So feel free to put as many as you like and buy a switch with a dimmer, right? Now listen, this is part of our kitchen project. I know you're gonna love this. If you learned anything today and this was helpful, give us a thumbs up. Isn't that funny? I think it goes blue when you do that on the video. <laughs> Don't forget to click the link here. You can watch this entire kitchen renovation from the very beginning and you're gonna see all of the aspects and how we can help you save money and do it yourself.